Oh my God, everything's going crazy. Hello, today we're at This Museum is an Obsolete, a uh, museum celebrating obsolete technology, experimental technology, and all the stuff. We've got the Mega Drone over here. It might be on, I think. Oh, it is on. The museum has been open for a couple of years now, and I'm pleased to say it's actually turning out pretty damn well. That's thanks to people coming along, playing on things, as well as the very kind supporters on Patreon, which doesn't just fund the videos, it also helps fund and make this uh, museum a viable kind of thing to actually exist. The museum is always a work in progress. I don't think it'll ever be done. If you ever come here, you'll likely see that there's been improvements happening whilst you're actually there at the same time. Because something else that contributes to helping this museum run, as well as um, being improved and such, is the volunteers that are very generous with their time who come along when they can to chat to visitors, fix things, and also work on projects in the weekend when it's open. And the project in this video, I can't take much credit for at all. It's been worked on for the past three or four months by folk who are helping out at the museum. Mainly Dax, Chris Riggs over the internet, Ash and Simon, who have been making this uh, project possible. You can see it slightly up uh, there. That's what we're gonna be talking about right now. It's that little thing above the Megadrome. We've still gotta raise it up a tiny little bit because it's covering some of the knobs, but that's that'll happen. Anyway, this project started when Pimeroni got a run of their brand new galactic unicorn LED board strips and noticed there was a tiny mistake. Of course, they only sell things on the website that they're completely happy with. So they had a handful of these boards. We racked our brains over here and came up with a pun because everybody knows that the project doesn't come first. No, it's the punny name. And the punny name for this one is called Long Pong. It's Pong, but it's long. <laughs> And you'll see when this video progresses, it becomes much more than just long pong. Yeah, whenever you say long pong, you've got to say it in a long pongy fashion. Anyway, they sent over five or so boards and we realized that probably wasn't going to be enough to make the pong that was quite long. But thanks to the rigorous testings, there was a few B-stocks left over that had a couple of LEDs that weren't working 100% correctly. So they kindly sent those over as well. And we all got to work over here starting to build the long pong, which started by getting some scrap wood from the yard. This wood was cut to size for another project I had, which I kind of ran out of steam for. And it just so happened it was pretty much a perfect size for Long Pong. Then Dax and I got all of the galactic unicorns lined up and screwed in onto this board, which gave us a good idea of what aspect ratio this game screen was going to actually be. The galactic inputs have a power input on the back, but they're also powered by USB. So I opted to go for powering it via the USB hubs that were going to be plugged all into one collective Raspberry Pi that controls the whole shebang. The funny thing is these galactic unicorns, each of them have a Pi Zero on the back. So it's basically got, I don't know, like 22 Raspberry Pis all in all. Oh, yeah, yeah. But powering it with the USB hubs came with its own set of problems. Because that was one, two, three, four, five. That was all, that was six, wasn't it? No. That was five? Five. Hey, look. Oh, one of them was even on still, but it was only on like really small amount, enough to get the microcontroller going, but not the LEDs. How strange. Okay, so we've screwed them in. I uh, need to get a couple more of the power things because they're cut off because it uses too much uh, current. That basically the wipe through these and then these wire through this. So instead of pulling them all off again and plugging wires into the power connectors, we tried plugging uprated power plugs into the USB hubs and that solved the problem. Woo! This is the point when Chris comes into the picture. The only problem is he lives on the other side of the world in America. But he was just who this project needed because as you know, I'm not codely endowed and this gosh damn thing needed coding. Chris also helped out with Lenve as well over on the organ console code after I did an attempt and it was absolutely stupid. They hopped on and made their own pieces of code and that's infinitely better than what I could ever do. I have serious admiration for people who are able to code things that work on things that aren't immediately in front of them, something like a, an organ console. But that's not a problem because this project was being talked about over on the Look Mum No Computer Discord and Chris decided to hop in and get his teeth stuck in over over the internet of course so you can see him on a webcam this is from later on in the video where we plucked a laptop in front of it so we could code the raspberry pi over the internet whilst watching the webcam pretty amazing that you can do that from the other side of the world anyway chris tasked simon and ash to code different firmware onto the galactic unicorns because there's a bunch of firmware available which makes it possible to control them externally with another raspberry pi you can see i'm already talking about things i don't have a fudging clue about we're reflashing these with custom firmware that will uh, allow us to after the new firmware was programmed, it was on to the next problem, and that was making sure that they were all in the right order and the right way round. Yes, but that's out of order. 
We've got one, two, three, and five. And I think they're inverted. Oh yeah, but still, we can turn it upside down. So yeah, need to crack down, but long pong. Yeah, we're coming in soon. Here comes long the ball. Long pong, here yeah. comes the ball. In. Oh yeah, they're inverted, so. Yeah. Yep, there we go, that's working. And after a little while, it all started to come together. Oh, nice. Best, best angle I can get you. The longest pong. All right, turn. There you go. Um, yeah, there's still probably a few bugs and stuff to work out and troubleshoot whatever is going on with the screen hanging every now and then. Um, but, yeah. Equilibrium has been reached. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. That's long pong. It's done. So if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe. That's the end of this video. And remember, don't be scared to try. Wait a second. It turns out Chris didn't want to stop there. He kept on coding. He kept on going. And he kept on adding bings and bits and bobs and different games and stuff until it was something else entirely. We're still going to call it Long Pong, but it is more than Long Pong. It's Long Pong Deluxe. Whilst Chris was endlessly adding to the code, he might even still be coding it right now. Who knows? It was a case of neatening and sorting out the back because it was in prototype phase. It was a little bit of a rat's nest, so it was a bit of a cleaning up job there. As well as Dax bashing together these rather heavy duty controllers made in a die cast Hammond enclosure. Funnily enough, the other day it was tested to its limit because one of the encoders snapped off. So somebody was obviously enjoying Long Pong a little bit too much. I gave it a bit of a doodle with Silver Sharpie and yeah, it's pretty much, it's pretty much there. So here it is, Long Pong in all its longity pongity glory. Uh, so I think it's a pretty good aspect ratio to play Pong on. It's got a load of other features as well. Uh, Chris went to town when coding it and uh, yeah, it's, it started out as just Pong. Now it's just a whole other beast entirely. For the last couple of weeks, it's been temporarily set up just over here so people can try it out, give it a bit of a test run and stuff. Yeah. Without the new song, it's not the same. Right? <laughs> ah. uh, it's all right. Oh, no, no, keep oh, on going. Oh. I don't want you to lose your game. I just... It gets hung up from time oh. to time. Yeah. But we're going to be bolting it to the wall uh, just after we have a closer look at what's going on it. So uh, this is the controller, controller one. There's another controller, controller two. Uh, there's a 10 meter cable between the controllers and this so we can get them a little bit further away and that'll all make sense in a while. So uh, with the controller we can bounce between all of the um, menus. So we've got long pong. We got snake. So let's start with long pong. So we hit A. Uh, we've got one player mode, two player mode, so we can play it with the second player. And you can also watch AI versus AI. But we'll go for one player, so we're versus. And as you can see, it's just it's just really long pong. It gets quicker as the game goes on, but we got we got long pong. Oh long pong pong. Every time it hits something like a boundary, it sends out a note, but it also sends out a trigger out. We're gonna try the trigger out in a little bit, make it play a few funky noises from a synthesizer. We're in stale mode. I'm gonna let them win. I'm gonna let them win. No! I just, I didn't even touch it. Come on, you can beat me, AI. It's coming, it's on its way. And defeat, so it's going up, it's got a high score. Let's have a look at the different games that Chris has added. We've got Snake, so this is Snake. Where is the, oh, oh, it's up here. Yet again, as it gets longer, it speeds up as well. Oh, I hit the wall, oh no. We've got Breakout. Oh, this is awesome, this is so cool. Oh. Oh, oh, as you can see, it's just really long. It's break out, oh. Whoa. So uh, we've also got space, space invaders, because it's really long. People have actually beaten it, including my dad, who actually beat that game, so it's pretty good. We've got combat. Uh, so this is a good old-fashioned game of combat. I'm not sure how you're supposed to move forwards on this. Ah! Forwards is the B button. So you're just playing along, you're trying to play. There's the other tank down here that's on player two. 
which is yep, that's working as that's working as well. Oh, oh no, I'm stuck in the wall. Wait, so we got uh, combat. We got demos. What are demos? We got the fire, which is the obviously the Pimeroni one. We got fire, lovely jubbly. We got Matrix, lovely jubbly. And we've got Game of Life, which is personally my favourite. It changes colour as it goes along. you recognise this from uh, the reflection that was shining onto the cryptocurrency synthesizer that was in the back of the audio of Night or Day. So uh, yeah, uh, you can see that shining in the background over there. And we're going to keep on going. We've got videos. So this has the ability to play some videos. Um, we've got a webcam. So the webcam's up here. I don't know where we're going to put this yet, but we'll see. Uh, 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 I'm going to go back. Hello, how's it going? How's it going? <laughs> so that works. We've got Bad Apple, of course. All screens need to play Bad Apple. So we've got Long Pong playing a bit of Bad Apple. Carrying on, we've got secret plans and you just got Rick rolled. Oh yeah. So Chris did this as a surprise and yeah, I don't think he was gonna give that up. So that is Long Pong. Now we need to bolt it to the wall. Uh, so it's that Long Pong. Oh, we couldn't have done this without you, Mike. Jobs are good. Everybody right. thumbs up to the camera. Yeah. Oh, you're winning. No, I. Oh, there we go. You're talking. Is long pong now in all of its glory i think chris is still going to add to it so bad so it's never going to stop but as you can see since i did that previous update if you saw in the last videos people have been enjoying it as it's been up on the wind uh, people have been as you can see people have been enjoying it in the museum and you'll notice there's a couple of other modes already added we've got a spectrum analyzer this is the uh oh it's eight hey woo! their response to things <laughs> We've also got a waveform, this one's awesome. The cool thing is if you play a synth or you've got a signal generator or you've got a vocal signal generator, you can sort of sync it up to get it to lock to the frequency that it's set at. Let's try it. Pretty cool, right? I asked Chris to quickly describe in a nutshell what was going on for us mere mortals to understand. The 220 by 53 display is made up of 20 Pimeroni Galactic Unicorns. Each one is controlled with a built-in Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller, running a custom firmware that displays whatever pixels it's sent over USB. The unicorn displays are all connected to a Raspberry Pi 4 through a few USB hubs. The Raspberry Pi runs all of the game software written in Python. It reads the player's controller input over GPIO and renders each full 220 by 53 pixel frame on the Pi as a 2D matrix of RGB values. As each full frame is rendered, it is split into 20 that's 20, sub matrices, one for each unicorn display. This data is sent to each unicorn over the USB serial connection, where the custom Pico firmware takes the RGB pixel data and updates each of its LEDs. This happens anywhere from 60 times a second to 120 times a second. Because we're able to display any frame we want, we're not just limited to games. We can also send it video frames, or even frames from a webcam. How cool is that? If you want to know more, there's a link to Chris's GitHub below and also a link to the Look Mum No Computer Discord if you want to have a chat with whoever was involved. This project, of course, wouldn't have been possible without Primaroni sending over some of those galactic unicorns. And from what I've heard, they think this is the most of them that have been wired into a Raspberry Pi at any one time. 
Chris has updated the special thanks to have a randomised list of the patrons that are involved in supporting the museum at this snapshot in time. They're in no general order, so the one at the end will not always be at the end, of course. And of course, this is great, much like the names written on the knobs, because these people make the museum and the projects like this all the more possible. And thank you very much for making it possible, because it's a lot of fun for people. I'll put up a full-length version of this on Patreon, so you can see your name if you're supporting this. And of course, if you haven't been on the Pimeroni site, well, there's a link below as well to check that out to see what else is possible with these LED boards. But yeah, comment below if you have any ideas to add to this. And of course, if you want to play on this, as long as you don't break any more encoders, you can come and play on it at This Museum's Not Obsolete on an open day. The link is below to check more information about that. And yeah, as always, I'm Look Mum No Computer. This is Long Pong. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and don't be scared to try it.